Chapter 16 Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to the Lord your God, for in the month of Abib the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. And you shall offer the Passover sacrifice to the Lord your God, from the flock or the herd, at the place that the Lord will choose, to make his name dwell there. You shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat it with unleavened bread, the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, that all the days of your life you may remember the day when you came out of the land of Egypt. No leaven shall be seen with you in all your territory for seven days, nor shall any of the flesh that you sacrifice on the evening of the first day remain all night until morning. You may not offer the Passover sacrifice within any of your towns that the Lord your God is giving you, but at the place that the Lord your God will choose, to make his name dwell in it, there you shall offer the Passover sacrifice, in the evening, at sunset, at the time you came out of Egypt. And you shall cook it and eat it at the place that the Lord your God will choose, and in the morning you shall turn and go to your tents. For six days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord your God. You shall do no work on it. You shall count seven weeks. Begin to count the seven weeks from the time the sickle is first put to the standing grain. Then you shall keep the feast of weeks to the Lord your God with the tribute of a free will offering from your hand, which you shall give as the Lord your God blesses you. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, the Levite who is within your towns, the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow who are among you, at the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. You shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and you shall be careful to observe these statutes. You shall keep the feast of booths seven days when you have gathered in the produce from your threshing floor and your winepress. You shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, the Levite, the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow who are within your towns. For seven days you shall keep the feast to the Lord your God at the place that the Lord will choose, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you will be altogether joyful. Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, at the feast of unleavened bread, at the feast of weeks, and at the feast of booths. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. You shall appoint judges and officers in all your towns that the Lord your God is giving you, according to your tribes, and they shall judge the people with righteous judgment. You shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality. And you shall not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and subverts the cause of the righteous. Justice and only justice you shall follow, that you may live and inherit the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not plant any tree as an Asherah beside the altar of the Lord your God that you shall make, and you shall not set up a pillar which the Lord your God hates. Chapter 17 You shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God an ox or a sheep in which is a blemish, any defect whatever, for that is an abomination to the Lord your God. If there is found among you within any of your towns that the Lord your God is giving you, a man or woman who does what is evil in the sight of the Lord your God, in transgressing his covenant, and has gone and served other gods and worshipped them, or the sun, or the moon, or any of the host of heaven, which I have forbidden, and it is told you and you hear of it, then you shall inquire diligently, and if it is true and certain that such an abomination has been done in Israel, then you shall bring out to your gates that man or woman who has done this evil thing, and you shall stone that man or woman to death with stones. On the evidence of two witnesses, or of three witnesses, the one who is to die shall be put to death. A person shall not be put to death on the evidence of one witness. The hand of the witnesses shall be first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. If any case arises requiring decision between one kind of homicide and another, one kind of legal right and another, or one kind of assault and another, any case within your towns that is too difficult for you, then you shall arise and go up to the place that the Lord your God will choose. And you shall come to the Levitical priests and to the judge who is in office in those days, and you shall consult them, and they shall declare to you the decision. Then you shall do according to what they declare to you from that place that the Lord will choose, and you shall be careful to do according to all that they direct you, according to the instructions that they give you, and according to the decision which they pronounce to you, you shall do. You shall not turn aside from the verdict that they declare to you, either to the right hand or to the left. The man who acts presumptuously by not obeying the priest who stands to minister there before the Lord your God, or the judge, that man shall die. So you shall purge the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear, and not act presumptuously again. When you come to the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you possess it and dwell in it, and then say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me, you may indeed set a king over you whom the Lord your God will choose. One from among your brothers you shall set as king over you. 
You may not put a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Only he must not acquire many horses for himself, or cause the people to return to Egypt in order to acquire many horses, since the Lord has said to you, You shall never return that way again. And he shall not acquire many wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor shall he acquire for himself excessive silver and gold. And when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself in a book a copy of this law, approved by the Levitical priests. And it shall be with him, and he shall read in it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by keeping all the words of this law and these statutes and doing them, that his heart may not be lifted up above his brothers, and that he may not turn aside from the commandment, either to the right hand or to the left, so that he may continue long in his kingdom, he and his children in Israel. After this he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in his house, and there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said to him, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, desires new, for he says, The old is good. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, Deuteronomy chapter 16 and 17. Chapter 16 begins with Passover. The Lord has commanded them that they would celebrate Passover and praise the Lord because He is the one who brought them out of Egypt. Also different festival like Festival of Weeks, which is also known as a Pentecost. Uh, seven weeks after the Passover was to remind them that they were once slave in Egypt. It was God who set them free. Also Festival of Tabernacle, seven days of festival to, to be joyful and thankful that God has blessed their harvest through their work of their hands. Also, these festivals are celebrated every year to remind them to give thanks to God and praise to God, making God center of their life. In the new land that they were about to receive, they are to remember God. In the new land, over two millions of people, they need laws and rule. So Moses told them to appoint judges and officials, and they were to judge fairly and do not take any bribe, do not show any favoritism, follow carefully to the justice. That means that you have to judge in fairness and judge right. So Israelite to obey God and worship God alone. And there were warning for those who build idol for themselves and worship false God, which God hates. And 17, chapter 17 continues to talk about this justice. If someone is accused of idol worship, they were met with harsh punishment. If someone is accused of idol worship, they were met with harsh punishment. They were stoned to death. If someone is accused of idol worship, they were met with harsh punishment, which is stoned to death. But it cannot be just one witness. The justice requires two or three witnesses, and the first witness is to throw the first stone. If there are difficult cases, uh, it is handled by the Levite, the priest, to judge them. And if they show contempt to the priest, um, they were to be put to death. And it speaks about appointing the king. They were to appoint the king, and here are the qualification. It must be fellow Israelites. Okay, it cannot be foreigner. It cannot be from other nation. It has to be one of them, the Israelite. And not have many horses. Not make Israel to go back to Egypt. Not to make, have many wives, for they might turn their heart away from God. Not allowed to have them large quantities of gold and silver. Must have the copy of the law and study it day and night. 
to know the law of God and follow his law and not consider himself superior than anyone else. That is the requirement of the king. Now Luke chapter 5 verse 27 through 39, Jesus picks up one more disciple on the road. His name was Levi. He was a tax collector. He says, follow me, and he left everything to follow Jesus. Now Jesus came to Levi's house uh, as a guest where Levi brought all of his friend and fellow tax collector. By the way, tax collector is called a sinner. And the Pharisees and the religious leaders saw this and they began to complain that he is associating himself with the sinners. So Jesus then said to them, It is not the healthy that needs a doctor. It is sick who needs a doctor. For I have come to save the sinners. Again, Pharisee complained to Jesus, Why is his disciple don't fast like John's disciple? In response, Jesus said, You do not put new wine in the old wine skin, or else it will burst. You put new wine in the new wine skin. This meant that Jesus is doing something new, a brand new, and it cannot be fit into the old religious system that they have. It cannot contain it. He is giving this new wine, the new covenant, and it must be received in a new wineskin. And what is that wineskin? It's a humility, a broken heart before God. You cannot receive Jesus, what Jesus offers, if you're not humble. You cannot receive what Jesus is going to give to them unless they are in broken heart that they realize how wicked how sinful and how helpless they are when they are that way they could turn to God and ask God for help that is the only way and that is what Jesus has done for us Jesus giving himself as a sacrifice to forgive your sin and the only way we could receive that is to say that God I need you I need you and I can do anything without you and when they depend on God in humility then they will receive God let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you so much that Lord there's only one way that we can receive this new covenant the covenant of your blood that Lord that you are to forgive us but the only way we come to know that forgiveness is to come humbly before you knowing that there's nothing we could do and just solely depend on what you have done we thank you for the cross thank you for your sacrifice in Jesus name amen